Hi guys, welcome back to another week of Art Life. Welcome back to my studio. I've just returned into my stu my home studio after doing an art residency. So everything is in complete chaos. Um, so I decided just to get stuck right in. I'm not gonna organize anything. I'm just gonna get straight to painting today. So this channel is not called Art Perfection. It is called Art Life. So nothing's gonna be perfect today. I haven't kind of got anything prepared in particular. All I've thought about really is utilizing my time with the residency and how can I make that kind of progress me in my painting. So basically I did this painting while I was on my residency. I called it Marmalade. It was a little orange tree with one of the big Suffolk skies um, that was just kind of, it was captured really quickly. It was the mood of the day. It's February, it's cold. Um, I also have a little orange tree in my living room and I was thinking about my life in the Mediterranean before we moved back to England. And it just made me want to kind of put a little orange tree in there for a little bit of joy in winter. Um, I actually have submitted this to the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition this week. There is still time to apply to that if you are thinking about submitting a small work that you've been working on for the summer show. So um, if that's just reminded you, I'm glad. So this piece, Marmalade. And I actually loved it, but what I was kind of sad about is that my residency ran out before I could work on a big scale, scale this painting up to be huge. Um, so when I came back to the studio, I realized that I had started a painting quite similar just before I had my baby. And then because of the, the madness of the time around when Leah was born, I never got to finish the painting. So I've put it back up in my studio and I've decided to rework the painting because um, it's oil, the beauty of oil, you can always keep kind of rework and go back to a work even years after uh, when you kind of have left it. So I'm gonna reactivate a painting and see if I can get a big painting, which is half finished, to look like this. So this episode is a transformation episode. So how are we gonna get this study onto this painting? Um, I can really see how I was starting to develop the atmosphere in the sky, but as it got towards the kind of treetop piece, I just left it as a quite an abstract piece because I just ran out of time. Um, this piece I had primed with a lovely raw sienna this piece hasn't got that base, so it's going to maybe be slightly harder for me to get that kind of warmth in the sky. Um, but I like a challenge. Uh, what I will start with is mixing some umbers, a few icy blues, and maybe if there's time at the end of the session, some of the rich greens. And what I'll do is I'm just going to shift around all of this paint and just bring it to the next level. Um, this is a really good episode in not being precious. It's okay to leave a work for a year if you like to, um, and then go back to it. This is what I'm doing now. Uh, there's no right or wrong. There's also a not a definitive moment where a piece is finished. Um, you can overwork something, but when um, you're really excited by a painting, um, I just think it's really exciting to ride that wave, which is what I'm doing with this piece. I'm sure a few of you at home might be like, no, don't touch it, it's perfect. Um, because to me it was never finished, uh, I feel okay about reworking this piece. There's a few others um, I have um, which I wouldn't touch because I've, I've decided to myself that they're finished. Also, when you work too much on a painting, the painting can get quite fatty. I don't know if you remember, we spoke a little bit about the mediums of painting and oil and fat over lean. When you work on a painting a lot over time and, and the paint builds up until it's really thick, it gets very hard to rework um, because basically um, there's no more kind of flexibility within the oil to allow for you to rework it which is not the case with this painting. Um, another thing I will say as well, sorry, the studio is an absolute mess, um, is the colour wheel. We spoke a little bit about colour theory in a couple of episodes way back when. Um, it's really helpful to have one of these in your studio. Um, obviously, we all know the primary colours of yellow, blue and red, but when you sometimes have a bit of time away from a painting um, and then you hold off a colour wheel to the piece, you can really see, I mean, I can tell that I've been far too much, particularly in the sky, in this side of the colour wheel. Now, if I go directly opposite, I probably need some richer greens to balance out uh, just some of the colour. I did start with the green and red. These are complementaries because for the colour wheel, whatever colour you have, the direct opposite on the wheel is the complementary colour. Um, so it's always helpful to know that uh, balance is needed with some pieces. The green and the red, very complementary colours. So that's why this piece felt quite harmonious to me. But when I was just looking at the colour wheel now and kind of where I want to take the piece uh, to copy this smaller study I've done, 
I realized that these pinks are way too icy. They feel almost like candy cane pinks. I want to soften those back and I'll do that with an underglaze. Basically, I'm going to muddy this all a bit up, make it feel like it's more kind of maybe Italian because again, I'm doing this Mediterranean revival with some of my landscapes. Um, but it's really helpful to know that I might, the, the green and the pink, they weren't really balanced. So what I'll make sure to do with my kind of transition of this piece is a much richer sap green. Um, and then the pinks, I'll push them back. So they don't, they don't need to be so fluorescent, um, which I think it was what distracted me too much with this painting. It was very fun to do in the spring. I actually realized that there's power in subtlety, particularly with color theory. So if I took more time, I didn't, this is straight from the tube here, which is very naughty. But I realized if I'd taken more time to get a more mature kind of softer color, um, I think I'd have been much happier with the piece overall. So lots to do. Uh, and I'm just gonna put some music on and get started. actually a really good example of that Oberlin what we were just talking about with the medium and the kind of the alchemical structure of oil paint um, so I've just applied, applied quite a thin layer of oil over quite a fatty you know this this side of the painting was already quite juicy uh, so in applying my thin layer of oil can you see how it's starting to separate almost like oil and water don't mix um, this the way and the kind of the way the paint is stretching um, and becoming quite holy and porous uh, that's because this layer is lean over fat which doesn't work and that's what's happening um, if you look at uh, so how I would then counteract this and um, because it does happen um, it's impossible to always paint your paintings layer by layer perfectly evenly uh, what I would then do is get a blending brush it could be um, yeah, just get a blending brush and I start to almost try and unify the layers again. Now it's going to take some time, but what I'm doing is I'm going to start to encourage these new layers of painting that I'm doing to bond again and to reactivate almost. Um, so what I'll be doing is I'll let that dry for a few minutes 
and then I'll start reworking it. Um, and then I'll just keep applying paint, keep blending it in until what happens is my new painting, this new painting that's kind of going on top of this one, uh, will feel more coherent to the painting underneath. So in blending this layer, what I'm doing is I'm merging it with the layer belief. I'm not the, la the layer beneath. I'm not erasing this painting. I'm just bringing it to a new level. So if that happens again, where I'm applying paint or you at home are applying paint and it kind of like stretches, it doesn't want to blend. All you need to do is soften it out with a kind of smoky brush just to allow more of the surface area to be covered. And also, again, you're making it wet again. So it's going to now play ball. It was just too dry underneath before. Uh, but now it's lovely and wet. And what should happen when I apply some paint is it doesn't stretch anymore. It just sits nicely and I can carry on with the painting. When you're ready, I'll start the trees. So I'm really pleased with how this is looking. Um, it's going to take a lot more time than I thought and kind of anticipated. Because of the scale, when you're working small with small brushes, you can make some beautiful textures really easily with the kind of detail. However, when you're scaling up, you've got to remember you need to scale up your brushes, stand back from the piece, have more time to realise that a piece is going to be read differently when it's four times the size. Uh, so I, I feel like it's much softer on the bigger scale so I can work into it over time. Also, I need to kind of think about my oranges a little bit more. Uh, I tried a couple, but they looked rubbish. So I'm gonna do those tomorrow. Um, but all in all, I think that's a really good start. Um, do please like and subscribe if you don't already. Um, and I would really love to hear some comments below if you enjoyed this video or if you had any questions about anything I touched on in the beginning. Um, I love, you know, just hearing you guys, uh, what, kind of what you think of the videos. Um, so yeah, we'll try and make another video for next week. It'll probably be more painting now that I'm back in the studio. Um, but I'm also doing more teaching um, in my practice generally anyway. So maybe it'd be awesome to bring some oil painting lessons, medium lessons of kind of how to uh, paint with oil. Uh, maybe we could do some classes together if that's something you're interested in. I think that'd be quite a cool thing to do here. So I will see you next week, guys. Bye.